Morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Shane Sakura, uh, MD of Rumble Resources, and I appreciate you taking the time to uh, listen to the Rumble story. Why invest in Rumble? We believe we've got uh, four key pillars within the business. The first pillar, I think, is important for an exploration company is a clear strategy. And our clear strategy is building a pipeline of projects, um, critically reviewing against stringent criteria. We've looked at over 500 projects to get to the point where we are right now. But what we do is low cost optionality over a period of four years. And we give ourselves one year to test these targets. Uh, discovery history, we got Brett Keeler, uh, seven, uh, discovered seven dis um, significant deposits that turned into mines. Uh, prospect of the year twice, only one of other, uh, two other people that have done that in his life. And 30 years of company making assets for IGO and Resolute. Was part of the initial founding um, stages of that business from five cents all the way through to nine bucks. So very um, successful junior explorer. Uh, fully funded, we've got some uh, funding in the bank. All our projects are low cost uh, to test for discovery. And our near term catalysts, uh, we have four projects to be drill tested and uh, four projects are currently getting drill targeted. So when we put this strategy in place in 2017, raised money in, uh, at five mil, five mil at 2017, we've optioned up five new projects, we've got one strategic application, we've advanced all six towards drilling, we had a, a, a Cop, uh, zinc discovery at Bracehold in our first drill program. We have a copper gold discovery in our second program at Manara Gully. To a point now, within the first six months this year, we're drill testing four of those projects and drill targeting another four. All our pro well, most of our projects are in Western Australia in a great jurisdiction. Uh, the other area is in the Sudbury district in Canada, which has produced over 1.7 billion tonnes of metal, has a couple of nickel smelters and a refinery. So a great jurisdiction to be operating in. Our first project is the Manara Gully, Manala Gully project, the one I mentioned before. In our first drill program, we have a significant discovery hitting 22 metres at 1% copper with uh, 18 metres of 2.2 grams of gold. Um, we have since extended that discovery to over 800 metres of strike. What's um, significant about this um, project is it has similarities to some large scale deposits in South Africa and Brazil, where they produce 97 million tonnes at 2%. And the reason it's significant, it has high copper to nickel ratios, high silver and gold, and low sulphur. So what we're about to do in this next phase of drilling is actually look to extend the 800 metres of strike. As you'll see in the bottom image, we actually have the uh, southwest strike extent that goes over eight kilometres. We're going to be air coring that uh, all the way through to the top project, which is the White Rose. And hopefully what we can find is um, significant discovery. The Irrihiri Zinc Project uh, is one of our um, flagship targets. Uh, this had been explored by uh, previous groups uh, in the past. It has over 20 kilometres of mineralisation, up to four kilometres wide. And what they were looking was for some flat-lying um, deposits. We've since um, put together some modern geophysical targeting where we've actually identified six gravity targets along an interpreted fault structure. And what's significant about that is that each one of those targets sits um, on, the, on the actual fault structure. It's at the same angle as the fault structure. All the base metals that's been discovered to date sits at the same depth of these um, gravity uh, features. And more importantly, when we did the 3D modelling of these targets, not one drill hole had actually hit that target. So we're about to uh, explore that one in the second week of April. Our next round of projects is in the Sudbury district, as you, as you may or may not be aware produced 1.7 billion tonnes of nickel, second largest in the world. It was discovered when a, uh, a meteorite hit the Sudbury Basin, uh, elevated all the base metal around this elliptical ring. And now what they're doing, if you look at the image, is they're focused on the Copper Cliff um, offset dike and the Victoria offset dike. So they're working away from the major areas, systematically working away from there, making significant discoveries. What we feel we've got is the potential of the Copper Cliff Offset Dike. The Copper Cliff Offset Dike itself has actually produced 200 million tonnes. And the group before us was targeting the uh, Long Lake Gold Mine. And they did a, a, a regional VTAM program and they found an anomaly 19. They drill tested at anomaly 19 and didn't find the gold they were looking for. But subsequently, a, a specialist in the field looked at the work done by this group and found it had quartz uh, diorite and Sudbury breccia and the same geochemistry as what you find in the Sudbury basin. So you can see our technical director, Brett Keeler, on the right hand side image, standing on top of the quartz or Sudbury breccia. That's 300 metres wide times one or four kilometres of strike. 
So we're about to do a high-powered EM survey over that area. We already know there's a VTEM conductor that hasn't been um, tested before. If we find a, a strong conductor below that target, then it's um, uh, re-rates us with a significant target within the Sudbury Basin. Just recently, we also operated on the, the Panache project, which is a different type of project. As you'll see, the, the vendor previously did quite a bit of uh, rock chipping and soil sampling throughout the project and found three key areas in area A, B and C. And if you look at the bottom right hand image, that's our technical director, Bet, standing on a 10 metre wide Gossen that goes over 950 metres. And, this, and the rock chipping there had uh, copper, cobalt, nickel, gold and PGMs. And so what we recently did was a, uh, a ground EM survey, uh, survey over the whole area and we found two coincident conductors side by side 40 metres down. So as of June, we're going to be going back out there and drilling these targets. Very compelling targets. There's never been any systematic exploration on this uh, project before. No ground EM and no drilling. The Brayside project, we'd say, is our flagship project. When we got this one initially, it was a, uh, a historic high-grade uh, lead mine that operated from 1901 to 1959. Had a series of uh, uh, discoveries along the actual structure, but no historic drilling or uh, geophysical targeting. And since then, we've conducted two rounds of RC drilling. And what we think we found is a, a porphyry to epithermal system on surface. And as you see, uh, on the image there, we think the epithermal uh, system is out to the uh, far uh, east and as you go away to the west, we think on that western margin is the porphyry target. So what we're going to be focusing on in this next round of exploration is flying some airborne magnetics along the 14 kilometres of strike. We're going to do some regional soil sampling along that project, along that edge, and then we're going to do some RC drilling. And if we can actually get some significant widths of uh, copper gold in the next round of drilling, it's going to significantly upgrade the project to the next level. We've actually got the Barramine project, which is the northern part of that project as well, and we've done some regional soil sampling recently, which actually highlighted the, the mineralisation carries on from 34 kilometres of mineralisation all the way through to 60 kilometres. So that's just the extension of that. The Lamel project is a, a project um, which is quite topical at the moment. We were looking in the Patterson province because our Brayside project is 70 kilometres out to the uh, west of this area. And before the, the Winyu discovery, which was recently announced by Rio, we picked this up. Subsequently, three hours later, Rio tried to peg over the top of it. We've, we're just currently at the stage where we're doing some work on um, some open file to see if there's been any historic exploration. We've just flown an airborne magnetic um, program over the area. And um, from what we can see, we're seeing some pretty nice targets and hasn't been a lot of exploration. So very exciting targets. In the next few weeks, that should be coming out. Being a junior explorer, it's difficult to operate in a, in a space where there's lots of cover, uh, lots of red herrings, like graffiti shales. We had the Fraser Range assets um, over the, you know, for the last sort of four years. We quickly discovered that it was too expensive for us to operate. We subsequently did some work with, I, well, did a joint venture with IGO who are spending over $50 million in that whole region looking for the next NOVA. Um, we, if they successfully earn in, we keep 30% of the project. So I've obviously gone through a little bit quickly today because there's a lot to cover, but I think our investment sh um, summary is pretty compelling for a junior explorer. With pipeline of projects, we have a successful check and regretter who's done it before, low cost optionality to test for discovery. And what I think the real important thing is that the near-term catalyst for a significant re-routing. We're drill targeting uh, well, uh, the ground EM at Long Lake. If we find a significant conductor in the Sudbury Basin, up Copper Cliff Offset, that's a significant drill target. We're drill targeting the Lemel Project, which hosts, um, obviously, the, the Winyu Rio Discovery. We're following up our regional porphyry epithermal um, scale system at Brayside and Barramine. We're, we're uh, following up our Copper Gold Discovery at Manara Gully, which starts about the 1st of April. We're then drilling the binary um, targets at Irahidi, those six big gravity anomalies sitting in the right structure. Um, we're then following up the Panache conductors that are sitting 40 metres below uh, a Gosson running at um, 950 metres. That's it, guys. <laughs>